Hey guys, I'm Ish, and welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I discussed three cameras that I was considering for upgrade. The first camera is the Canon M6 Mark II. The second one is the Canon M50 Mark II. And then we round it off with the Sony ZV-E10. I'm gonna tell you guys why I decided to pick the Canon M50 Mark II. I also decided that I didn't wanna shoot in 4K. If you are gonna be shooting in 4K, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll let you know which camera I recommend. Okay guys, as I mentioned in my previous video, I currently have a Canon GX7 Mark II. And while it's a great camera, it's five years old and a lot of the features are outdated. First, I ruled out the Canon M6 Mark II because it was too expensive. The Canon M6 Mark II is a beast of a camera, but it's a bit more camera than I need right now for the type of videos and content I create. I plan on shooting in 1080 while the videos that I'm creating don't really need 4K and I don't really think you guys need to see this mug in 4K. I mean, really. 4K video file sizes are much larger and editing does tax your system a bit more and that's something I'd like to avoid at this point. I really couldn't justify the price of the Canon M6 Mark II considering that I could get a less expensive camera and perhaps some lenses and accessories for the same price. As I did my research, I found that consumers are very similar to the Apple and Android battle. So you either have loyalists to Sony, Canon, Panasonic, and other very popular camera brands. I'm coming from a Canon and I decided to stick with a Canon because I'm comfortable with the interface. I will let you guys know that the Canon ZV-E10 is still a great camera. The Sony camera allows you to use multiple lenses throughout the entire class of lenses. So if you're coming from a Sony and you want to stick with Sony and be able to use some of the equipment you already have, then the ZV-E10 may be the camera for you. The Sony camera features the bouquet effect and a product feature that the Canon M50 Mark II does not. The Sony camera also allows you to shoot in 4K while maintaining autofocus, which is a feature that's not available on the Canon M50 Mark II. The Sony camera also has a headphone jack, so you can monitor your audio in real time. With the Sony hot shoe mount, it allows you to connect multiple devices wirelessly that are compatible with the Sony interface. But something to consider is that you do lose the flash mount if you're a photographer and there is no built-in flash with the Sony ZV-E10. Even though the Sony ZV-E10 has a ton of great features, I'm gonna tell you why I decided to go with the Canon M50 Mark II. As I mentioned, brand loyalty is something that's important to me. And while the Sony has a lot of great features, I'm comfortable with the Canon interface and I didn't have any problems with the Canon camera that I had and that weighed in my decision to stick with Canon. I'm also shooting in 1080, and the 1080 on the Canon camera is actually better than the 1080 on the Sony. Another thing that had me lean towards the Canon M50 Mark II is the menu system. The menu system on the Sony cameras is a bit more cumbersome based on the reviews that I saw, and I'm comfortable with the Canon system. The Sony system does not allow you to control the menu through the touchscreen, which is a feature that I wanted in my new camera. I can hit the record button from the touchscreen, which means that I don't have to manipulate the camera too much and worry about changing my shot un unintentionally. Based on the reviews I saw, a lot of people mentioned that the color that comes directly out of the Canon is superior to the color that comes out of the Sony. And while you can fix this in post, this is something I don't want to deal with at this point. The Canon M50 has an electronic viewfinder which is something that allows you to capture more of the scene. And if you're shooting outside or in brighter conditions, relying solely on the LCD, which is what you'd have to do with the Sony, is not something that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility in your shooting. Finally, and most importantly, the price of the Canon M50 Mark II, so low for the body only, it allowed me to purchase an additional lens that allowed me to mitigate some of the features that the Sony had that the Canon didn't. The bouquet effect that you may be seeing behind me is based on the lens I'm using. The Canon M50 does not feature the product feature, but the lens I'm using does pretty well if you want to show a close-up of a product. It does take a second for the focus to come back, but it's not something that bothers me. If you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in my life on the other side of the camera, check out my Instagram. The lens I'm using is a Sigma lens, and it's a 16mm lens with a 1.4 f-stop. As I mentioned already, I'm going to be shooting in 1080p, so the Canon M50 Mark II is great for that. If you're interested in shooting in 4K, 
The Canon M6 and the Sony ZV-E10 may be a great choice for you. When you're shooting in 4K, the difference between the Canon M6 and the ZV-E10 is the Canon camera shoots at a higher quality, and it doesn't have the crop factor that the Sony ZV-E10 does. The sensor on the M6 is a 32 megapixel, whereas with the Sony, you're looking at 24 megapixels. The Canon M6 has a higher bit rate of 120 megabytes per second. The Sony ZV-E10 features 100 megabytes per second. The Canon ZV, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Canon M6 also has an optional electronic viewfinder. The Sony ZV-E10 does not come with a viewfinder, nor does it have an option to mount one. As I mentioned previously, if you're currently a Sony user, then keeping a Sony would allow you to use multiple lenses that you already have. With the Canon, you need additional mounts and adapters, and you have to consider whether or not you want to carry around these additional mounts and adapters when you go shooting. All right, in this video, I talked about the Sony ZV-E10, the Canon M6 Mark II, and the Canon M50 Mark II, and kind of gave you guys an idea of which camera to choose based on your needs. I love my Canon M50 Mark II so far, and this is actually the first video I'm shooting with it, and with my Sigma lens, I think the combination is great. That's a lot less to think about when I'm shooting, and I'm looking forward to getting to play with these toys in the future. I will be doing an unboxing and a first impression video next week, so go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you guys know when that comes out. I'll put a link in the description to the lens I'm using. Here are a few shots I took with the camera. There is no animal eye detection, but I was able to get some pretty cool pictures of my sidekick. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe, and try to be the reason someone smiles today.